Hey everyone, Vinayak here. Today I have with me AMD's 8600G, a CPU with an integrated GPU. It claims to allow you to game albeit in a low end without needing a GPU in your system. So let's test out their claims in this video. This is AMD's Ryzen 5 8600G APU. APU or Accelerated Processing Unit generally means a CPU with a GPU merged into a single processor. This is the 6-core variant of AMD's Phoenix APUs. The 8600G has a 760M Radeon graphics built-in which uses AMD's RDNA 3 architecture and is clocked at 2.8 GHz. It's a 6-core 12-thread CPU as with most Ryzen 5 CPUs. It comes with a base clock of 4.3 GHz and a boost clock of 5.0 GHz with a 65W TDP. The 8600G lacks PCIe 5.0 support and is configured with a PCIe 4.0 into 8 connection for a graphics card. The 760M is based on the new RDNA 3 architecture and has 8 of the 12 CUs equivalent to 512 shaders and is clocked at up to 2.8 GHz. The Ryzen 8700G comes with 8 cores and 16 threads and has the 780M Radeon graphics integrated within and also supports PCIe 5.0. There's at least a 10K variation in the price between the 8600G and the 8700G. All 8000 series CPUs use the same AM5 socket so you can upgrade later if you want. The 8600G uses a LGA or LAN grid array, which has these contacts on the bottom as opposed to pins on the earlier generations. In order to test the CPU, I need a corresponding motherboard, which is the MSI B650 Gaming Plus Wi Fi motherboard. RAM is 32GB of G Skill Trident Z RGB RAM with a speed of 6400 megatransfers per second. As if you share system memory, having more RAM and also fast RAM will help with performance. Power supply is a Corsair VS550, a 550 watt unit, which should be able to adequately power the 65 watt TDP of the CPU. For storage, I'm using this, the Samsung Evo SSD, not the fast but the only one I have in hand. Thermal paste, I have with me the Cooler Master Master Gel regular thermal paste. So let's get building. Open up the CPU retention mechanism on the motherboard and you can see that the pins are below here. As I had said earlier, the CPU now has only the contacts and this is where all the pins are. Here's the CPU. Find the golden triangle on the socket and also on the CPU. Match them up. Place the processor into the socket and clamp it down using the retention mechanism. As easy as that. Let's install the RAM now. These are 6400 mega transfers per second, TDR5 DIMMs, and RGB to boot. Match the notch to the RAM slot and push in until you hear a click. Same with the second DIMM. The CPU does need a cooler, and it comes with one in the box, which is the Wraith cooler. The 8600G comes with a Wraith Stealth cooler as it can handle the power draw. The 8700G comes with a Wraith Spire Cooler. We have some thermal paste on the bottom, let's clean that up. My thermal paste came with a grease cleaner which is a plus. Now it's clean. The cooler uses the mount already available on the motherboard, so put some thermal paste onto the CPU and place the cooler on top. Make sure the screws match the four corners. Screw them down diagonally to get the best thermal paste spread. Don't tighten down all the way first. Once each side is in, tighten them all down. Connect the CPU fan cable to the header and we are mostly ready. This is the Cooler Master HAF XB EVO which is still one of my favorite cases for a test bench as everything is easily accessible from the top. And here's the Corsair VS550 power supply. The motherboard comes with a backplate which has to be installed onto the case. Then align the motherboard and install it within. Make sure all the ports line up. Connect the 24-pin power cable, 8-pin PCI power, USB header, and that should be it. Tap on the power button and the system is alive. We have a display on the monitor and yes, we do. Starting off with Cinebench, these are the scores. Single core, we get 1761 and multi-core is 13618, which is decent. What is special about this CPU is the 760M GPU and here are some gaming benchmarks. When first running Cyberpunk, I noticed it was using only 410 MB of VRAM, which is quite low. The iGPU uses part of your RAM for itself, so off to the BIOS settings. Expo, I need to turn them on as the RAM is 6500 MHz and it's only running at 4800. These CPUs and iGPUs like fast RAM and now it's set to the fastest possible speed. 
Now for the shared memory. Game mode allows to dynamically allocate memory as required by the game and it's listed that 4 GB can be allocated only if we have more than 24 GB RAM. We have 32 GB so game mode it is and once we reboot we can get into a game here you go we have 4 GB VRAM Cool now let's check out Cyberpunk 2077 benchmarks at 1080p low with FSR on we get 53 fps 1080p medium with FSR on we get 45 and 1080p high with FSR we get 33.75 fps In 1440p and low with FSR on we get 41 fps. 1440p medium with FSR we get 33.91 and 1440p high FS with FSR we get 23.24. Now for Red Dead Redemption 2, 1080p medium 47 fps. 1440p medium 31 fps. I also tried out Grand Theft Auto and 1080p high I got around 70 fps. That depends on where you are in the game. You could even get more. During the test, the CPU ran quite cool. While gaming, it did loiter around the 45-55 degree range. When running benchmarks, it peaked at 76 degrees. The 8600G runs pretty well at 1080p and even manages 1440p. That is, if you are fine with playing AAA games at 30 FPS, FSR gives the 8600G's performance a boost and frame rate becomes more tolerable. costing about 20 to 25k the 8600g with an igpu could become the budget gamers initial choice and with the ability to add a gpu when the prices drop is a plus the 8700g costs almost 10k more and has the 780m igpu with 12 compute units it can provide a bit more performance but is 10k more the 8600g has very good gaming performance at 1080p and it's excellent value for money is very power efficient and also supports amd ai features i have another video over here the 8600g is worth it if you plan on using the igpu but if you are purchasing a gpu with this apu then i would suggest purchasing something else for light loads such as 1080p gaming browsing the internet streaming video this will not disappoint it is at present the most powerful integrated gpu so that was the video make sure to like subscribe and hit the notification bell to be notified when new videos are added thank you for watching and see you all next time